Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This module is on cell signaling mechanisms, that is, those mechanisms by which external signals tell a cell to perform an action. Two other expressions which are also used to refer to these mechanisms are signal transduction mechanisms or second messenger signaling mechanisms. To place this module in context, we will look at the slide which we have seen in the previous module. We were looking at proteins on the cell membrane and for a functional classification of membrane proteins, we used this mnemonic TREXA. The T of the TREXA was for transporters on the cell membrane which transport substances across the cell membrane. We have completed a detailed a fairly detailed discussion of the transporters on the cell membrane, the ion channels and the carrier proteins. Now we are going to see mechanisms by which external signals instruct a cell to perform an action. The reason for placing this module at this point of time is because many of the cell signaling mechanisms employ the reg of the TREXA that is the receptors, enzymes and the G proteins. In this session, we will make repeated references to the reg of the TREXA, receptors, enzymes and G proteins. While all external signals must have to bind to a receptor, the receptor can be a membrane receptor or a cytoplasmic receptor. When the external signals bind to a membrane receptor, further steps along the pathway may or may not involve G proteins and membrane enzymes. There may be other pathways through which a membrane receptor brings about a cellular response. Now what are these external signals like? They can be mechanical signals, touch, pressure, electromagnetic signals like light or chemical signals. We understand these a lot better we can have neurotransmitters, hormones acting on a cell or paracrine and autocrine substances. These are substances which are released in the vicinity of a cell by the neighboring cells and then act on a target cell. Autocrine substances are released by the cell itself and acts on the very same cell. All these chemical signals are collectively called as ligands. In this module, we will focus on how ligands act on a cell because that way we will cover most of the signal transduction mechanisms that we need to learn about. Now these ligands we just saw can bind to a membrane receptor or a cytoplasmic receptor. I wish to dwell a little more on why we are learning about signal transduction mechanisms especially because There can be any number of external signals, innumerable external signals and acting on various cells there can be innumerable cellular responses. So what are we trying to do? Are we just trying to sample a few of the signals and a few of the cellular responses? What is the idea of this module on signal transduction mechanisms? Let us say that there are these two cell types, different cell types. One is a liver cell, let us say, and the other is a neuron, whatever. Now, the ligands that the different types of cells in our body are exposed to are there in the extracellular fluid. They are present outside all the cells, but they will not induce an action in all cells because the cells will have 
will have to express receptors for those ligands. Receptors are like antennae which bring a ligand to act on a particular cell. Cell 1 may have receptors for ligand 1, 3 and 5 and another cell might have receptors, membrane receptors for ligands 2, 4 and 6. And let us say cell 1 has these responses in response to ligand receptor combinations. And let's say cell 2 has these responses. Now, while a partic particular cell may express a set of receptors and another cell a different set of receptors and therefore different cells have different responses, it comes to the point that the signaling pathways through which the ligand receptor combination produces a response is a finite set of pathways which all cells seem to be endowed with. The same set of signaling pathways. Ligand 1, for example, could bind to membrane receptor 1 and use this particular signaling pathway to produce a particular response. In this cell, ligand 6 may bind to its receptor and use the same signaling pathway A to produce a different response in that cell. So while there can be infinite ligands and infinite responses, there are only a finite number of signaling mechanisms that all cells seem to be endowed with. And it is those signaling pathways that we are going to study in this module. Though I say that this is a finite set of signaling pathways, as you go, you would realize that the number is quite big. Of those, we will study some of the more clinically better known signal transduction mechanisms. We will consider the individual signaling pathways per se in the forthcoming lectures. And now we will look at some generalizations. The signaling pathways very often end up activating an enzyme within a cell or a protein within a cell. And that's how the response is produced. For example, when insulin acts on a liver cell, the liver cell will take up glucose and glucokinase in the liver cell will be activated. Glucokinase will add on a phosphate group to glucose. Kinases are actually phosphorylases which add on phosphate groups. So this enzyme glucokinase is activated when insulin acts on a particular cell and the enzyme which produces that response. What is that chemical reaction which activates the enzyme. The enzyme is there in the cell all the time, but that enzyme does not act. If it keeps acting all the time, it is a constitutive enzyme. But if it is going to act in response to a ligand binding to a membrane receptor, it is a regulated enzyme. So ordinarily, it would exist in an inactive form and only when the ligand binds to the membrane receptor, and induces a signaling pathway, that enzyme will be ultimately activated and produce the response. So what is that chemical reaction which activates that enzyme to produce a response? It's an alluringly simple step. The first time I learnt about how proteins within a cell are activated, I was quite surprised that this switch which activates a protein is so simple. It is just addition of a phosphate group to that protein. Protein phosphorylation activates that protein, the enzyme in our case, and that brings about the response. Now protein phosphorylation 
uh, addition of phosphate groups to certain amino acids of a protein is brought about by enzymes called protein kinases. Kinases are phosphorylases. Glucokinase would be an enzyme which adds a phosphate group to glucose. Protein kinases are enzymes which add phosphate groups to proteins. Phosphate groups cannot be added on to any amino acid in that protein. There are only three amino acids in a protein that can take up phosphate groups. These are serine, threonine and tyrosine. So depending on whether a particular protein kinase phosphorylates tyrosine residues or serine threonine residues, we could classify protein kinases into tyrosine kinases and serine threonine kinases. While protein kinases add phosphate groups to proteins, protein phosphatases will cause dephosphorylation. They will split the phosphate group off. Looking again in the context of cell signaling, what we have now considered is that a particular ligand receptor complex brings about a response by acting through certain cell signaling pathways and the final step in that pathway which produces the response may be activation or deactivation of a target protein, let us say an enzyme. Phosphorylation of that protein can either activate it or deactivate it. I am not saying here that phosphorylation always activates and dephosphorylation inactivates. For some proteins, phosphorylation may activate it, while for another set of proteins, phosphorylation may actually deactivate the protein. And dephosphorylation can either activate or deactivate proteins. Enzymes which bring about phosphorylation are protein kinases and those which bring about dephosphorylation are protein phosphatases. We will be dealing more with protein kinases in these sessions, not because they are more important, but we know a lot more about protein kinases than about protein phosphatases. The ligand receptor combination will go through a series of steps which we are referring to as signal transduction mechanisms to activate protein kinases within a cell and then we know how the response comes about. We have already considered this while different cells may have different membrane receptors and produce different responses in response to different ligands, all of them seem to be endowed with the same set of signaling mechanisms. We are considering some of these mechanisms here. These mechanisms could involve one of these protein kinases, protein kinase A, protein kinase C, protein kinase G, and a set of kinases called calcium calmodulin dependent kinases. Most cells are endowed with all these mechanisms. These are not the only kinases in the cell. Now all these kinases that we have just considered are serine threonine kinases. The cells also have tyrosine kinases. So these kinases will bring about phosphorylation of a protein in response to a ligand binding to a membrane receptor. In the subsequent sessions, what we are going to consider are the immediate steps which happen after a ligand binds to a membrane receptor. What are the steps here which end up activating some kinase within the cell? And the kinases will then phosphorylate and therefore activate or deactivate a protein. 
and that will bring about the response. Our strategy is to learn about these steps up to the point of activating a particular kinase. After considering this kind of a sequence where a ligand membrane receptor combination activates one of the kinases that we saw in the previous slide. We will see those mechanisms first. Then we will see other ways in which a ligand membrane receptor combination can induce a response, not going through a kinase. After having considered those, we will see how some ligands bind to cytoplasmic receptors. Very often, a ligand binding, binding to a cytoplasmic receptor induces protein synthesis. And that is brought about by the ligand receptor combination homing in onto the nucleus and inducing new protein synthesis. And the synthesized proteins bring about the response. So this will be the schema in forthcoming lectures. Thank you for watching this NPTEL lecture.